Hey, Don Bennett here, coming at you from Don Bennett's Drum Vault. We make videos all the time of all the cool, famous drums that we have here, but uh, people routinely ask me, what kind of drums do I play? And uh, that's not a simple answer because uh, there are many. So I've actually got three main go-to sets for most of the purposes that I play uh, in. and. Uh, Every now and then I'll just pull something out because I want to check it out, but uh, I want to show you my three main sets. The one I'm sitting here right now at is a Mapex Saturn set. This set I actually got from my very good friend uh, Joe Hibbs, who was the artist relations manager at Mapex at the time. So these are Saturn shells. Uh, and, you know, when they came out with this thing, they called it Sonic Clear Edges. Honestly, I thought it was just some of the latest marketing jargon. You know, it said they made them easier to tune and makes them resonate better. And, you know, you kind of hear that stuff a lot. And maybe, you know, you're a drum dealer for a while, you get a little jaded. Anyway, I was blown away at how well these drums do exactly what they say they do. They say they tune up faster and easier, which they do. And the projection and resonance is just like, it, it's unbelievable. That is a 24 by 16 inch bass drum with a 12 by eight rack tom, 14 by 14 and 16 by 16 floor toms. I use two snares with this. If I can get away with it, and it's, it's a loud situation. I use a 1970s Ludwig 402, six and a half by 14 Superphonic. And then uh, in, if it's a lower volume situation, I will use the matching five and a half by 14 Mapex Saturn snare. I've got Remo black dots on the tops of all the toms, clear ambassadors on the bottom. I've got a power stroke on the kick drum. Today, I've got an emperor, a coated emperor on this snare and a coated black dot on this one. So that's what I'm using right now and they work great. My cymbals are all Sabian and I have a, uh, I've got a large collection of Sabian cymbals uh, that are basically AAX and HHX. Uh, I've got like three complete sets uh, up today, I've got a couple of, these are, they say prototypes, they're AAXs, and then there's an AA Rock Ride and AAX Stage Hats. Uh, one way or another, the symbols I've got will cover all the bases I need. So, this is the set I use in bigger venues. Basically, if I'm gonna be miking the drums, this is the set. In my studio, I've got another set. Uh, so let's go check that one out right now. Okay, so here is my beloved 1950s WFL set. This set is a 22, 13, 16, 18. They're white marine pearl with all nickel hardware. And then I've got what could be the world's most badass snare drum. It's a six and a half by 14 anniversary model, uh, Ludwig and Ludwig. This is, uh, again, uh, 1940s. Um, just an amazing sounding snare. All of these drums, I've got calf heads top and bottom. When I got this set, they had calf heads on them. And I've had lots of sets with calf heads, but I'd never really monkeyed with them. And so I just tried them, and it, I was amazed at how great they sounded. And so I've, uh, I've really explored it a lot more, and I just really love the way they sound. Calf heads are super warm sounding. I found for me, to get the sound I like, it's imperative to get pretty thin heads uh, I've got them from Stern Tanning, uh, who still makes them just like the old school ones. In the bass drum, I have uh, about three or four inches of little squares of cut up newspaper. Probably about this deep, uh, laid flat in the drum, giving it just a tiny bit of uh, 
muffling. You'll hear uh, it has a nice big long note. Uh, I can shorten that if need be, but uh, ah, it's kind of what I like. My symbols are all old Zildjians, A Zildjians. These, I believe, are all like there in the 1950s range. Uh, 14, 17, 18, a, about an 18 and a half inch china and a 20 inch ride. Um, in this room, I'm actually using these things called cymbal pads. They're like the normal felts you would use, uh, you know, for any cymbal, but they're larger. So you can sort of tune how much uh, sustain and how loud your cymbals can be. These are a great thing for, uh, you know, if sometimes you just got to turn down. And finally, definitely worth pointing out is one of my favorite uh, discoveries uh, lately are these A and F cymbal stands. So these are, you know, my, the set has all nickel hardware and so I wanted to have hardware that matched the set and also matched the, the vibe and the look of the vintage drums. Really, they look like vintage stands. They look like old stands, but functionally, they are super solid, super smooth. All the fittings, just it's so easy and smooth adjusting these things. They're just, they're just so much fun to use. Anyway, I just get all excited about those because they just make my life easy and I just like to walk in this room and look at them. So those are my 1950s WFLs. And finally, I've got another set and yeah, this one takes a little explaining. Okay, so a lot of guys think of me, you know, like the vintage drum guy. And then they see me sitting behind an electric set. Um, I basically, I gave up the battle. So I like to play loud. I play rock and roll. I mean, that's what I do. All, everything I play is rock and roll. Um, I like the way drums sound when they're hit hard. I've just always played hard. Sometimes where I'm playing, it's a smaller venue where a loud drum set is just gonna overpower the situation. I sort of fought that battle for many years and I finally, uh, I gave up and just, uh, I tried these electrics, they're awesome. They sound killer, straight out of the box. You plug them in, everything sounds great, and they can sound big and huge and fat at whatever volume you need. So for the band I'm playing with, um, we can get a big, fat, live stadium kind of a sound in a very small room, and uh, it gets the job done. Uh, I really despised playing these things at first, but now I really love them. I mean, it's just like, it is a different instrument. It's a completely different instrument. And again, I mean, it's kind of like playing on calf heads. You have to kind of understand what this instrument does and understand how to adapt to them. Anyway, I love playing them. This is a Roland TD30 and a bunch of letters, but it was, the best one you could get for many, many years. They're also kind of fun to play because everything is much more compact and I just don't have to reach as far for everything. It's, it really is a lot easier to play. Uh, worth pointing out is the Gibraltar rack that I put together, but everything I've got here, can I do it? See, this whole set all lifts up when I go to a gig, that whole rack, I just pick up and put in the back of my car. I, when I get to a gig, I just set that there, put the pads on, plug them in, and I'm ready to go. It really makes my life a lot easier and uh, kind of looks cool. Anyway, these are my Roland Electrics. I'm admitting it, I'm coming out. Yes, Don Bennett, the vintage guy, plays an electric set sometimes. All right, there you go. Those are my drums. Uh, stuff's always coming and going, changing, who knows, by uh, next year, it could be a whole nother three drum sets or maybe more. Anyway, enjoy, that should answer your questions. See you on the next one.